And um, right now I'm going to uh, ask JJ because I believe we have still one more pool to go. We do, yeah. We do, yeah. Thanks, Christoph. Um, so we just have one uh, last question to ask all of you in the audience um, uh, before we uh, go into questions that you might have. There's a few questions asked uh, by, by some of you in the audience, and we'll get to them in just a minute. I just wanted to ask all of you this one last question based on what you've just seen. Uh, whether you would uh, yourselves consider upgrading to a new MySQL major version if it would mean an increase in performance for your workload. So it'd be, uh, it'd be great to get your feedback here. Uh, it seems like an obvious choice, but maybe, you know, I mean, there might, there might be some other considerations as well. Uh, so it'd be great um, to get your feedback of, you know, whether, yes, you would consider an upgrade or, you know, it might depend on what the increase really is. And, you know, maybe there are some other variables that you need to take into consideration, of course, before uh, doing an upgrade um, other than performance. So it'd be great to get your feedback. Thanks very much for, for participating here. Uh, and we do have a few questions uh, that came from from the audience, so we'll, we'll get to them in, in just a few seconds. Thanks very much. I'm going to close this. There's still a few of you giving, uh, giving their feedback, so thank you very much for this. I'll just wait a few more seconds. Great. Great, thank you. I'm going to close this now and share the results. Okay. Great. So it's a bit of a tie between, you know, um, a good part of you who um, who would consider an upgrade and then others who say it would depend on what the actual increase is of the performance. So I think that, probably, that, that makes sense. And then of course, there are other reasons um, that play into um, considering such an upgrade. Any comments on this, Christoph, before we go to some of the questions from the audience. Yeah, I mean, it's really nice to see people looking forward to new features and uh, increase of the performance um, you know, by, through, through the upgrade process. And this is really uh, important, I mean, important. Um, it, it kind of comes in line with the um, number of the MySQL 5.5 users which are still out there uh, as our first pool showed up. So most of the time, upgrading from 5.5 to 5.7, you would see a really nice uh, improvement of, of the performance. So this is definitely something I would, I would, I would recommend at least looking into, see how it would work out for you. Great, great. Thanks, Christoph. Um, and I'm just going to hide this now so we can get back to, um, uh, to your slide. But yeah, so there are, there are a few questions. Um, that uh, have been asked. So let me have a, actually there are quite a few questions. <laughs> so, and uh, we're over we over the hour, I know, but if you guys don't mind, uh, we'll we'll take a few more minutes to uh, to answer some of these questions. I know we're a little bit over the time, but um, there are some nice questions here. So there's a question here that relates to the earlier poll about um, you know testing configuration changes. And you know, one of the answers here was to use a separate test environment which mirrors the production environment. Um, in that case, because of how would you replicate production? Uh, production workload, yeah. Um, this is more or less what I covered, what I, what I mentioned during the uh, presentation. So what I would do is basically uh, use the backup of the production data to build the environment. And then what I would do is uh, to collect the production traffic, ideally more or less from the time before the benchmark, uh, before the backup. Um, and then uh, basically replay it using uh, Percona. I would probably use Percona Playback, uh, which is a nice tool this, which is intended for this particular type of work uh, to replay the slow logs or, 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 or uh, data collected using TCP dump on some host. Um, obviously, it's not perfect, um, but well, that's how it works. Um, the other option, which is also I would, I would like to mention here is, for example, to use uh, ProxySQL, uh, which has a feature which allows you to mirror traffic. On, so you can basically run the traffic on your production server and then mirror it on some other set of hosts. This would also uh, work really nice. But the, the thing is that you want to have 
queries, I mean, the traffic uh, has to be exactly the same all the time. So actually mirroring won't work. You have to have uh, queries, a fixed set of queries, and then replay it over and over again, unfortunately. I mean, but that's, that, that's, the, that's, the only, that's the only way to have a predictable and uh, results which will be in sync with every iteration of the change. Great, uh, great. Thanks, Christoph. And there's a question here from someone who's a uh, MySQL NDB cluster user. And the question is whether um, um, some of the techniques that you mentioned here, the tuning techniques, can be uh, can be applied uh, to NDB cluster as well, or should should they be looking at uh, some other tuning techniques? Um, I mean, in general, well, regarding MySQL, I was focusing on InnoDB, which obviously makes it not really useful for NDB cluster. Um, but in general, the whole process itself, I would say, I mean, it, it will work with any type of database. Um, it's just a matter of what you tune, and um, that's about it. You know, the process itself will be basically the same. Prepare environment, do some tuning, check the results, restore the environment, go on, and proceed uh, like that. It's just a matter of what variables you are going to switch. Cool, cool. Thanks, Christoph. And uh, there's a question here um, uh, from Sean who's asking whether you have a recommended benchmarking tools. Like anyone, any benchmarking tools you might recommend more than another? Um, yeah. So, 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 so that two problems here. Like benchmarking tool won't reproduce your your production workload. Yeah. So it is not really. Uh, not always relevant to what you will see in production. Uh, having said that, um, personally, I'm, I like using either Sysbench, which is the really easy, nice way to, to run some synthetical benchmarks. Um, another uh, another tool which you can use is uh, TPCC uh, benchmark uh, for, uh, for MySQL. Um, and I believe, uh, the Facebook uh, has their own uh, benchmark set, which is more uh, suitable for uh, social media and relational. I mean, they, all those vectors between uh, connections between different, uh, you know, users, you know, friends and friends. So, so this type of uh, this type of workload, um, I haven't used it personally, but uh, I've seen it in. Other people running them, Link, Link Bank Bench, if I remember correctly, that's it called. Um, so I would, I would suggest looking at those three. Okay, okay, great, great, thanks, Kozlov. Um, and I think I know, I know we're over the time, but there's a good few questions still. So if um, if anyone, if everyone is still okay to hang around with us, we can ask a few more questions. If you're okay for that, Kozlov, as well, you have a few more minutes, yeah. Sure, of course. Okay, okay. Um, so there's a question here um, <clears throat> on which variables especially have an impact when tuning for storage with, with very low I.O. capabilities? Uh, sorry, could you uh, repeat one more time? Sure. Uh, which variables have a particular impact, you know, when tuning for storage with very low I.O. capabilities? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um... Well, definitely for any type of storage, the um, you know, DB flash log matrix commit. This is this is very important. I mean, you can you can uh, reduce the number of flash and disk operations uh, significantly by setting it to zero. Obviously, as I said, it is comes with some danger that you may that the MySQL D crash may uh, affect in data loss, but it's up to you whether you accept or not. Um, I assume that uh, I would assume that low um, I/O capacity storage would be something more or less like spindles. Um, in that case, um, having large uh, InnoDB uh, read log might help significantly because you want to uh, with spindles you want to um, basically write things uh, in a a serial way. Um, 
And I believe that's, I mean, you know, you want to you know, remove binary logs if not needed because that's another set of uh, I operations that uh, that has to happen. Um, if you are feeling lucky, you may want to uh, disable, I mean, the, if you don't have binary logs, you may want to disable uh, support for XA transactions. Also, will save a little bit more of, uh, of the I.O. Um, and that's about it. I mean, double buffer, yeah, but this is very, that, that would be really dangerous, actually, to run without double buffer, unless you have some kind of storage or file system which will handle it. Um, but that's that, that, that's about it, unfortunately. There's not. I mean, if if the I/O is slow, then there is just little you can do from a MySQL point of view. Okay, okay, um, great, great. Thanks, Christoph. Um, I guess um, there's still a couple more, so maybe let's uh, let's see if we can uh, just uh, maybe two more questions, and then I think we can wrap up because we we're a good bit over the hour now. But there's a question here on free BSD. I don't know if you want to cover that, Christoph, and it's whether you have any specific advice for free BSD. Unfortunately, I'm I haven't used it much on production, so um, I'm not feeling like you know, competent enough to to answer here. Okay, okay, uh, fair enough. So the question is from Federico. I mean, so, yeah, so like, go ahead, Christoph. Yeah, I mean, what I would like just to add is that that my school my school settings are you know the same. It's just a matter of. Um, Understanding how uh, the handling of the operating system changed, but most of I would say most of these tunings tunings that we we covered here for MySQL should be relevant to FreeBSD also. Great, great, thanks, Christoph. And uh, the question was from Federico. So Federico, if you have any follow up questions on that, uh, maybe we can we can discuss them uh, after the webinar. And there's a question here on cluster control, and I was just checking with my colleagues. And cluster control is the um, the solution that uh, that we offer at Several Nines for managing and uh, automating um, uh, open source databases. Of course, MySQL is a, uh, one of the big ones that we support for that. And the question here from Andrew is whether cluster control uh, is going to offer a rolling upgrade of a Galera cluster to 5.7, and um, it's in the works. So that's a feature that uh, that's in the works, but um, we're depending here on uh, also um, the release uh, of um, of the 5.7 version from Percona. So we're kind of waiting for that to happen from on, on the Galera side. So once that's available, then we'll we'll get onto it as well for for cluster control. So we'll we'll keep you in in the in the loop um, for that. And of course, once we once the feature is out, then we we'll, we'll let you know. But uh, thank you for the question. Um, that uh, that was a nice question. And um, so yeah, I think uh, so we can probably um, I think we can probably wrap up now. Um, there are there are other questions, but they seem a bit more specific. So what we'll do is we'll answer those questions um, to you directly via email. Uh, I think they might take a bit more time to answer for some of them. Uh, but thank you for asking them, and thank you um, everyone for your participation. Uh, it was pretty interactive, which is nice. And you can see on the last slide here, there's a few additional resources that we make available. So there's um, 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 a white paper that we published um, uh, on the MySQL application blueprint. And there are, there's a whole series of blogs around how to become a MySQL DBA. So please do check them out. There's uh, some good information there. And uh, since we're talking about 5.7, um, Christoph, you wrote um, a white paper, right, on how to upgrade to MySQL 5.7. And um, that white yes, paper... Exactly. Yeah, and we're going to publish that white paper this week. So look out for that. So if you're looking to upgrade to 5.7, uh, you'll have a nice guide um, in your hands for that um, pretty soon. Um, I don't know, Chris, if you want to say something about that and before we before we, uh, we wrap up. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, basically what we, the white paper that we'll be publishing soon, we, it's intended to guide you through. Um, through the whole process, more or less step by step, um, guide how to how to upgrade, what kind of gotchas you uh, you need to be aware of when upgrading to 5.6 and uh, 5.7. Sorry. So yeah, I, I, I really hope that you will find them useful, all of you who plan to uh, plan to upgrade to, to the latest MySQL version. Great. 
Great, thanks a lot. Yes, so this is um, so we will we'll communicate via email and via blog on this new white paper on how to upgrade to MySQL 5.7. Um, so that's coming out this week. So look out for that.